I don't know what possessed him today, but I ain't crossing that, okay? You know what time it is when I have a teacup in my hand. Today is candy cane matcha. I realized with this one, you gotta add a lot more so you can get the flavor. I'm so extra like Drake. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. In this video, we're gonna do a compilation of story times, like last week where I did three or four stories about transit. Today, we're gonna talk about work because I've been working for a long time since I was legal to work. I've been eager to work. And most of my jobs have been customer forward, customer facing, customer service, which means I was bound to be in the mix with a little bit of drama. So I'm gonna share it. Some of these stories are disturbing, disgusting, disrespectful. If you know, you know. If you've worked in retail, if you've worked in restaurants, you know. So let's go. Okay, so. Should I start off with the worst story or get worse as we go along? Let's start off with some light work first. So I remember when I was, I would say I was a teen and I was working at Zara. A lot of you guys know from my past story times, I was at Zara when I was in uni to pay for my books, school, whatever, shopping, going out, that life. And this particular night, this is the worst story of all, but whatever. This particular night, Always, did you notice every time I do a story time, they start doing construction, rude. Oh, so I should probably start off by saying, when you work a shift at Zara, I don't know if it's the same now as it was back then, if you work at Zara, let a girl know, but back then they'd put you in different sections every hour, this way you stay sharp and you're not doing the same thing for 95 hours straight. So you'd be in basics, then you'd be in trafa, then you'd be in women's, then you'd be in the fitting rooms. And in this particular hour block, or maybe two hour block, I was doing the fits. And the fits is where 90% of shoplifting goes down, okay? People bring in their Amazon or eBay demagnetizers and the teeths go wild. So I've seen a lot of ish over a long time. Anyway, this particular night, there's three catties. There's no other way to call these chicks, okay? I'm not a judgmental person, but if you give me the vibe and you give me the energy, I'm gonna give it back. So these three catties came in, they had shoes with them, and one of the policies is no accessories, no shoes in the fits, because those are the easiest things to steal. At one point, I saw one of the three amigos trying to take her shoes into the fitting room. This is already after I heard bags being unzipped and things trying to be clipped. I didn't know if they were successful with the clipping, but I could tell that things were trying to be snipped and clipped, okay? So I just casually say like, no shoes, like I said. And then the girl kissed her teeth at me and I'm like, okay. And then all three of them abruptly like started making even more noise. And I'm like, okay, come on guys, like don't steal. I just said it like that because at this point, I don't know if I had a long day or I just didn't care. I'm just like, don't steal. And I think because I said it so casually, they were taken aback because they all left the fitting rooms and they're like, we're catch you outside. And this was way before the catch me outside chick. So when they said that, I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Ooh, not the construction outside too. This is how you guys really feel during my video. Cha. I'm thinking these girls are just like fake. They're just fake hard with it. You know, people say catch me outside or I'm a wait for you or whatever. I'm like, okay. These women actually waited out for me. I shouldn't even call them women because women don't act that way. These girls children proceeded to wait outside for me and this is before the store closed and i was doing a closing shift so if you never worked in retail before when the gates close that's not the end you still have to clean up reorganize sometimes replenish restock and the cashiers count the till so all of that was happening and around the 30 minute mark they left but for half an hour straight my coworkers are coming up to me whoever was cleaning the front of the store like Yo, are those girls your friends? Because they're saying they're waiting for the curly haired girl, but they're also cussing and saying bad things. I'm like, why would I have friends like that? And also, why would my friends talk about me like that? And I already told a few coworkers what had happened in the change room. So they were looking over and they're like, yo, they're still there waiting. I was so confused. If you were planning to steal at our store, you're probably going to steal at other stores. So why not maximize your time and go do that? Go do what you were doing. Why are you waiting for me outside? I don't understand. I guess around the half an hour mark, they got bored, tired of waiting, whatever. So they left. And I think I still worked for another like 15, 20 minutes because it takes a long time to clean up that big store. At one point, the manager's like, just to be sure, do you want to go through the back way? And I'm like, no. Listen, I've never been in a physical fight, don't plan to ever in my life, and I wasn't planning to that night, but I'm also not gonna sneak through like a thief in the night. I didn't do anything wrong. So anyway, I leave work, 
and nothing happened. That was so extra for no reason. Okay, moving on from that to a more disturbing experience. When I worked at a restaurant on King West, I had a lot of unnecessary comments made. I was usually one of, if not the only black girl that worked the front. I was a hostess. There was always like one, maybe two servers or support staff, but very few. I feel like not a lot of black people work in restaurants downtown Toronto. I'd always get comments like, what are you mixed with? Oh, you're too pretty to just be black. And I'm like, how is that? That's not a compliment, fam. This particular night, a guy came in because we also ran coat check, which was a lot of shmoney. You could make a lot of coin if you did coat check back in the day. This particular guy comes in, gives me his coat. I go into coat check and he's like, ooh, can you do another 360 for me? I just went back into coat check and I didn't come out until he left. That's disgusting. Just know these things should not come out of your mouth. It's not a way to hit on me. It's not a compliment. You're just grimy. Another time, another man came in and he's like, wow, everyone in this restaurant is drop dead beautiful. I say, oh, thank you. But what happened to you? I'm thinking back in the day when you're on the playground, when guys like you, they always do that whole make you the one that's singled out. I'm thinking, okay, immature game, but I see what you're doing there. So I just laugh it off. He's like, no. Seriously. Why? What? What? What did I do to you? I was confused and I thought maybe he was going to laugh afterward or something. No, he just walked by. Remember, I'm the hostess, so I'm supposed to seat him, but he just walked by. I said, I don't know what possessed him today, but I ain't crossing that, okay? Back to the mall with this story time. So a couple years after Zara, I started working at Victoria's Secret. This is when it was new in Toronto and it was it because nowadays it's all about skims and savage. But back then, Victoria's Secret was elite, okay? I remember being so proud to work there. I loved, I always wanted to be a Victoria's Secret angel even though I ain't got height. So I remember being on the cash this particular day and this woman comes up to me while I'm cashing out somebody else buying a lot of things, which requires a lot of attention. Side note, I wasn't legally blind yet. Stardust disease kicked in, so my vision was diminishing, but it wasn't as bad bad as it was gonna be. So I had to pay attention, make sure I scan all the tags and all that type of thing, because there's been times where I've double scanned things or not scanned them at all. And I always try to do my best to pay attention. So when this other customer came up to me and said, excuse me, how much is this perfume? I simply said to her, the price is at the bottom of the bottle. I can't read it for her because it's too far, it's too tiny. Even if I had 2020 still, I probably couldn't see it. I went back to talking to the customer I was cashing out because Victoria's Secret's policies, you always have a conversation, make sure that they got everything they need, you know, the usual. And I even mentioned to the woman, like, I'm sorry about that interruption. Was I rude? And she said, no, I guess the other customer overheard that. Cause the next thing you know, I see her talking to the manager, the one manager that I don't like. Okay, you see where the story's going? So once I cash out the customer and we have a good report and she thanks me, then I get a call on the headset to go to the manager's office. I go in, the manager seats me down. She says, you know we're a lifestyle brand. Victoria's Secret was so big about this whole lifestyle brand, having people being vested so they keep coming back and buying forever. I'm like, yes, I know. And she's like, well, we had an incident with the customer and they said you were very rude to her. And I said, I spoke with the customer I was dealing with because of course that is my focus. The person that's actually being cashed out, that's actually spoken to me first, not the person interrupting me for service. I didn't say it like that, I said it much nicer. This manager was not hearing me because Victoria's Secret, the customer is always right. I hate working for stores like that because let's be real. Eight times out of 10, the customer is actually wrong and taking liberty. This is what I've realized in many years of working in retail. At that point, I just shut down and I listened because sometimes speaking back further proves that you're rude or disrespectful or whatever. So I just like listened and I said, okay. And she's like, okay, go out there and offer 60% off the perfume. I'm like, okay. I don't know if that was supposed to be a jab to me because I don't care if you want to take 60% off a perfume for this rude customer, it's not hurting my pocket. So the customer comes up to the cash and you need to give me 60% off because you weren't nice to me. I didn't respond to that comment. I just told her what the total was after tax. And I think she expected me to be all sweet and give her like the best customer service of her life to suck up to her and kiss her butt. I ain't the one. I didn't even say any pleasantries because I don't play that. I'm not gonna be rude to you, but I'm also not gonna be nice to you because you basically tried to come for me in my job. When she left, she was kind of perplexed because I think she was expecting to get the service of her life, but no, go about your way. 
Go about your way. One of the times when I was working Fitz and Victoria's Secret, which I didn't really do often, because there they usually section you off so your cash and beauty or Fitz and stock or that type of thing. But I don't know why I was in the fitting rooms this day because that wasn't my section. But anyway, I was in the fitting rooms and a whole bunch of Brazilian tourists were in. Brazilian chicks love Victoria's Secret. I guess the Adriana Lima Hive is big. But I remember having to tell them 90,000 times each time because they were trying on so many swimsuits, like, you've got to put your panties underneath. And they were like, ah, they didn't understand me. I'm like, you can't. I know there's like the lining there, but that's if you wear it when you go home. Like when you're in the store and you're trying on swimsuits, you got to wear under. It wasn't it just it wasn't clicking. It wasn't connecting. I think I worked there for two and a half years. So it was at least two Valentine's or as I call side chick Valentine because the day after Valentine's Day, side chick day. OK, either men would come in and buy gifts and clearly and confidently tell me they're buying it for their other woman. And I'm like, why are you sharing this with me? Or. Women would come in and return things with stains. I'm not gonna tell you what the stains are because this is YouTube, let's keep it PG, but stains. And I'm just like, why am I handling these things that were obviously used last night? I just, I didn't understand why Victoria's Secret took it back. We obviously destroyed it, but I also didn't understand why we would, customers always right. Let's move over to the last job I worked. So as you guys know, the month leading up to when I quit my last job was terrible. I think it was about three weeks, <laughs> three minus T weeks to me leaving when this incident went down. I had already had a traumatic situation happen the night before. I feel like that's always how it goes. Customers test me the most when I'm already going through personal turmoil. This customer is so sweet initially. She comes out of her session. I ask her how it was. She said, it's great. I say, I'm happy to hear that. I ask her if she wants to book, not when, if she wants to book. Her instructor had a whisper in my ear. She wants a five pack or whatever. She said, yes. And I said, do you want to buy a five pack or try doing singles? What do you want to do? And she's like, mm, how much is the five pack? And I tell her, and it's expensive. I can't lie. Where I used to work, the services were expensive. I said, it's okay. You can also consider to come back or we can honor the introductory package maybe an extra week because usually you have to secure the deal at the time that you're cashing out your orientation. But I said, you know, we're all going through life changes. It's a pandemic. If you need an extra week or two to decide, I'll still honor the introductory price. Price. She said, okay. Asked me another question and I answered it simply. And then... We started to book her complimentary three classes because there's this whole thing when you book an orientation, you get up to three classes. You know how they say up to in small print with asterisks and small, like that type of thing. That's when she flipped the script. She started yelling at me. Where I used to work, it was not just a studio, but it doubled as an education center. So students were having class and she was yelling so loud that it was interrupting the class. And there was private sessions going on. And I think there was also a group class happening. And I'm just like, this is mortifying, okay? I've been working in customer service for a long, long time. And I've never experienced anything like this. This woman yelled at me, called me out my name for 36 minutes, accused me of lying and trying to take her money and how I switched when she didn't have money for the five pack. And I said, I'm sorry. I, I treat all clients that come in here the exact same, whether you're buying a single or a 40 pack, it is of no consequence to me. I just want to make sure you have a good experience because that's what Pilates is about. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Off, off, off. At one point, I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry I've made you feel this way. I'm sorry that I've obviously done something to create this environment. And honestly, I didn't. But at this point, I'm like, I need to do whatever I can to bring her down another level because this is just too much. The scene, the standing back, the pointing, the coming forward, the yelling at the top of the lungs, the telling me that, you know, I work in customer service and the customer's always right. If you work in customer service and you're trying to get your way with me by yelling at me and embarrassing me, you have no couth. But anyway, at one point I'm like, I'm sorry. I need you to lower your voice because class is going on and there's still private sessions. I'm more than happy to help you with this. I just need an okay from the director. Go get your manager. We don't have a manager, unfortunately. She quit three weeks ago and we haven't gotten a replacement. 
That was true. We didn't have a manager on site, which further added to my stress because this wasn't even my job anymore. I had been promoted to the other end of the building on the head office side, but since they didn't want to pay for my replacement, I was doing both jobs for a few months. I was so mad about this. This is exactly why I don't want to work on the side anymore. This is exactly why I don't want to work on this side anymore. But at one point I'm like, okay, it's obvious that I can't assist you at this point. I've already told you that once I emailed the director, you're going to have an extension and definitely get your three classes. It's not about that. It's your delivery. Why couldn't you have said that from the beginning? And I told her I was trying to tell you that, but you were also telling me about how you had an appointment the one day that you could take the class. And I was telling you, I wish you had told me because then I would have given you an extension before and asked blah, blah, blah. But she wasn't hearing it. She was just going off, 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 off. So I said, okay, at this point, I do have to step away so I can email the director. The system's not working on this side, but I can email her on my main computer on the other side. It was true. For some reason, the computer happened to glitch on me. I'm like, you know, this is actually a good thing because I wouldn't want to be typing this email in front of her zoomed up so she could see what I'm writing. So I might as well go back to my desk where I belong and actually do what needs to be done. Does this woman not follow me, also because that's where you have to exit, through the head office side and still berates me the entire time? She gets stuck because you have to press a button to open the door. So I press the button to open it for her and I'm like, sorry again and have a good day. And she continues to like harass me on the way out. Waiting for the elevator, I can hear her still venting to herself. Does she not complain to her friend that goes to the studio, my director, and someone higher up? I'm like, it really wasn't that serious for up to three classes, bro. You really can't make this ish up. Back to Zara, because I think this is a short story, but also a really bad story. Two times when I was in the fitting room, I was disrespected in the worst way. One time, I guess this girl recently gained weight or was going through a major life crisis because she wanted a larger size in her pants. And I guess she was so frustrated, she threw the pants at me. Not like a here, catch it, which you shouldn't do the fitting room person, but a throw it on me to the point where it landed on my shoulder. And I was just, I was so perplexed. I put the pants down on the table and I just walked away. I just walked away. There was nothing else I could do because I was so shocked and I'm like, who throws pants because they gained weight? I could hear her venting their friend, oh my God, the medium doesn't fit, Zara's clothes is so small, which it is, it is, your sizes are smaller. But I don't mean you can throw your pants at me, lady. Then the other time, another lady, I don't even know what it was, but I swear I didn't do anything to this person. I'll tell you what time, the last story will be the time where I was in the wrong, okay? But this time, I don't know what happened. I can't even remember, but she called me the N word. And I was just like, it's not that serious. I said, don't call me that. I'm not that. And I think a few other customers heard. So they all looked at her and looked at me. I think they expected me to pop off. I know I'm a Scorpio, but I can keep it calm, cool, and composed. Okay. So in that instant, I'm just like, what am I going to do? Cuss her off raw? Mm -mm. I know I'm not an N word. So I'm just going to let her know I'm not an N word. Why are you saying that? And then she was just kind of perplexed and caught back because I think she expected to get like this angry. I've been called the N-word a lot at a lot of jobs. So at this point, I'm just like, you have to be mentally unhinged because it doesn't make any sense. It literally doesn't make any sense. The last story for the two of you who made it to the end is actually when I was in the wrong. So let me paint a picture. I'm working at Zara. It's Boxing Day. My ex broke up with me on Christmas Day. So the day before. And we'd been dating for two years. So yeah, it was, it was a mess. I was devastated. I was traumatized. I had worked, I don't know if I started at 12, but the shifts were really long. I remember all day long, people were looking for this one particular piece in medium. I don't know what it was, if it was on trend that year, if it was such a good markdown, but there was this one thing that 95 people came up to me and other coworkers at one point, we even made a joke about it. Like, what is it with this piece of clothes that everyone wants in a medium? A medium has been sold out for morning. At this point, the store is closed. The music's been off for 15 minutes. The gate is half open to let the last people cash out and get out. Does this little girl who has a big pile of clothes bigger than her come up to me? Excuse me, can you get me that in a size medium? I said, it's a size large and size medium has been sold out since nine o'clock this morning. Um, can you, can you double check though? So I pull the tag and I show her large. Oh, do you have any more in stock? No, like I said, it's been sold out since this morning. We would have replenished it. Many people have asked for it today. It's been sold out. Now my patience is wearing thin because you're asking me to go checks again. She asked me again, are you sure? Can you check? And I could tell her she was looking around 
in my section to see if there was someone else to ask. And that frustrated me even more because it's like, you think I'm not getting it because I'm lazy or you think I'm not getting it because I don't care. Like I take my job very seriously, even when I'm devastated because my boyfriend broke up with me on Christmas day. She asked me again and this time I snapped. I don't even remember what she said. I said, listen, the store is closed, but I'm still here. So you have to service me. At this point, I had to get a little ruthless. I said, the store's been closed for half now. The music's been off. You're still here and the gate is half closed. I think she didn't know what to say at that point because usually people don't say that to customers. But I was just so over it. I just wanted to go home in a ball and cry. And this broad is bothering me about a piece of clothes that hasn't existed in the store. Stunned and looked at me and scurried off to the cash to cash out her things. And she was the last person to leave. And literally by then, because she had taken so long in the store, we maybe had 10 minutes before we had to leave. She was in the store for a long ass time. Anyway, those are all my work story times. Actually, I have more, more popping into my head as I'm talking to you. So if you want a part two, let a girl know by hitting the like button. Comment down below if you've ever worked in retail or restaurants and had experiences like this. I'm sure you've had because I feel like it's always the people that expect the best service that don't give respect. I don't know what it is, but that's how it is. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this one. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.